Hi guys, I'm here with Grinder. He is in a couple, or we mentioned him in a couple of our previous videos, and we are finally doing a video that a lot of you guys have asked for, which is uh, describing our solar setup. And Grinder helped us do that, so he's going going to explain it to you guys. We wired from the battery um, to uh, the solenoid, which let's go look at that now. These large wires are the charging wires and the wires that go to the front of the engine. The large red ones. Yeah, the large red ones. And we chose a diameter uh, far, or a wire gauge far in excess of what she needed because uh, in, in the chance that this battery was actually going to be used by the other battery to start the engine, you're gonna have a lot of amps dumping through it. And it just made way more sense to go way overkill. These are uh, uh, six gauge. These are 8-gauge wires instead of the 10, 12, 14-gauge that they were recommending. And uh, that's basically just in case you were going to dump that many amps through it or it's short somewhere. Uh, the wires, which we've run uh, on carpet and on things that are flammable, the wires wouldn't be the point where it goes. The battery will actually just drain right into it, depending on the fusing of their the actual truck system to take care of any problems there. And then for her actual home or setup in here, we put our own fuse in. So we try to keep the systems as separated as possible. And nicely labeled. Okay, so when we drive, the we have wired the system as such that it charges this auxiliary battery. Can you explain how we set that up? Okay, so she has a solenoid. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can get in there. Yeah. So she has a solenoid. That's a solenoid. Yeah, and it is just a mechanical relay. And the solenoid goes to this uh, large fuse. Large fuse. Yeah, and that's the one that goes to the, uh, that both charges this battery when it's dead off of the vehicle's engine and also will send power to the battery in the case of her actual main battery dies. Yeah, I realize we just showed you a black box that really do you any good, but this is her fuse for the, uh, for charging from the engine and for this uh, battery getting power to the starter and as you can see it's uh, this fuse block is separate from the other fuse block and it's much larger and it will also be more expensive. Uh, the wire, well you can see uh, solenoid goes from the battery through the uh, fuse. fuse and then through this red wire which you saw go all the way to the front of the vehicle. And it, yeah and it comes down here um, taped down by the driver's seat and then and goes through one of the uh, ports in the firewall yeah that is how um, we get power stored into the auxiliary battery when we're driving but we also have a solar setup yeah, yeah so that's all the vehicle side stuff and this um, this fuse block all of these wires this charging module which we'll show you the other side of uh, that's all part of how she gets power to her stuff uh, from both the solar power and from the battery and uh, how you charge your fridge and everything else. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole separate. In your opinion, it was overkill that we set up the solenoid to charge while we were driving uh, to into the auxiliary, into the auxiliary battery and um, set up solar panels. Can you tell us why? Well, a the the amount of power like so before you do any of this you should probably figure out how much power you actually need and it turned out that they had so much power uh, on tap from the engine that for them to drain this particular battery which was a, a far larger capacity than they ever needed uh, was was going to take uh, the solar panel uh, a week to charge back up if they had happened to kill the thing uh, and their actual power requirements uh, were actually pretty far in line with this battery. So with these deep cycle batteries, it does say that you can uh, completely uh, use them, but you want to keep it between a 30 and 40% range or even less, because the less you cycle this battery, the more out, more times that you get to cycle this. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it degrades in, a, in, a, in an exponential factor. So Basically, you don't want to drain the battery. You want it to be three quarters of the way to mostly charge or halfway to mostly charge. Yeah, exactly. So even though this battery may look very large, if you were to use that 30% every time, uh, that's 70% of this capacity that you're, you never want to touch because you want to not replace this very expensive battery all the time. 
your battery was so at such high quality it could light the rest of the wires on fire and still uh, keep outputting. Very good. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the solar panels and how those are wired into the system. Uh, she bought this. Uh, it's a very nice charge controller. Uh, I know the Chinese charge controllers are cheap, but you can find a very high quality one, which they did. And this does all of the battery maintenance and the solar cell maintenance. So it, and it, uh, it also has a USB and other auxiliary functions that made it really good for the setup. But these wires that you see coming out of it, uh, one goes to charge the battery and one set goes to charge the battery and one set goes to the solar panel. Here it is from the front side again. We, um, we wanted this kind because it told us uh, how much power was coming in and how much power we have left, basically. Her solar panels took an early fall, so a lot of this is repair. <laughs> um, but they were ripped off when we were driving 70 miles down on the highway in Mexico, and I brought them back in and grinder tested them, and they still work, so we rewired them back onto the roof, and they are attached in a more solid way, and um, and grinder will explain how he did that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you do buy these solar panels, they look a lot nicer <laughs> Than are. they currently do. They've also been on the roof for a year and a half at this point. I, I, and I think these are fairly good, it, considering yeah. it got dragged down the highway for I don't know how long. Yes. Uh, uh, the flexibility of these solar panels and their durability, I think, is probably what you're going to want. The hard solar panels, the higher outputting solar panels, actually are going to have an issue uh, just because the vibration of the car will eventually crack uh, the substrate. And uh, on top of that, uh, these flexible solar panels in general will perform better in low light conditions and in this uh, configuration where you can't move it with the angle of the sun you're not going to get the output that you that you are expecting out of the solar panels uh, advertised output. Um, the other thing is that repair uh, waterproofing was a huge issue uh, most every one of our connections is both uh, mechanically uh, mechanically connected soldered and then on top of that shrink wrapped uh, and in in this case, they also have a insulating bar, high voltage insulating varnish uh, applied to it, and, uh, and the blue around there is a silicon that we, yeah. that we basically put because those connections had to be completely redone from their original connections. Model actually has a really good uh, original connection. Yeah, original connections. We just and and typically you can just. Um, like plug it in essentially, right? But yeah, they have rubber boots. You plug it in. Uh, it's act they actually have their, their own priority charge controller that you can keep plugging and everything. But on a car, you're going to need to run wires uh, a far longer length than you'd be willing to pay for for these connections. Yeah. So um, because the solar panels ripped off the roof, uh, we basically had to dig out the connections and uh, rewire them manually so that's what the deal with all of the gunk on the top is that was for waterproofing um, but uh, if you buy these solar panels generally you'll just be able to plug in your connection and then send the wiring down like we did and i'll show you that here so the wiring comes down this side of the panels underneath the box and um in through the door basically we didn't we didn't drill any holes or anything. It's just, uh, I guess, slammed in the door. And then... <laughs> it's, it's underneath the, the outer uh, seal and over the inner seal for the door. And we felt that was, that was good enough considering the insulation on the wires and the fact that her inner and outer seals were very well done. And better, better than drilling a hole in the roof of your car. Yeah, if you can get away with never drilling a hole in the roof of your car, it's good. If, if you want to do that make sure you buy some of the rubber grommets and gaskets that you would need to seal that up because there's that's gonna be very difficult no matter what so then these wires run down the side underneath our platform and over to the charge controller other thing we did is put this uh, these extra cigarette lighters in and why did we do that grinder uh a this almost everything you buy has a that's electric has a cigarette lighter um, as a way to charge and that's gonna be a little more like I know USB USB C all these things are gonna be something that people are looking into and her charge controller actually has USB on it uh, but USB has a limited number of amps whereas these ones especially a higher quality ones uh, and, and these turned out to be higher quality than the ones that came with the car will allow you to pass more uh, amperage through them 
so you'll be able to charge uh, things like your compressor without mm. blowing out all the fuses. Our air compressor blew out all of the fuses uh, for the cigarette lighter, uh, the cigarette lighters that came with the vehicle, um, and so now I just plug the air compressor into these, and uh, it's been fine. Also, uh, cigarette lighters in general are safer because they also have internally, the actual plug usually has an internal fuse in it. So even if all of our fusing and the solar controller and everything else dies in terms of safety, you still have at least that one more fuse. And that was a huge thing, I think, is uh, uprating all the wires uh, and making sure that everything was fused because there's just so much flammable in a car and it's going to light up very quickly if it does, if there is a fire. And we also made sure that every single one of our connections had that mechanical um, uh, connection and soldered and uh, was insulated with the um, uh, with some uh, shrink shrink wrap and, and those and we also use all stranded wires which is another thing don't use household wires in the vehicle basically the stranded wires allow the flex that the uh, the solid wires will not eventually the solid wires if they're in a uh, being flexed a lot will crack and then they'll cause shorts so they'll they'll be able to jump the gap but every single one of those sparks wears away at the wires wears away at the insulation and eventually could start a fire uh, and that's why the connections uh, all the connections in here uh, wire to wire were made so strong is because uh, it makes one less failure point and one less point to short on something because remember this entire car is metal so any positive connection could, could short to earth. So the two solid connections we did is uh, these kind of crimped connections and these are meant, uh, these you can buy anywhere, I don't like them that much but in these, this configuration allows them to pull off things to either troubleshoot or to replace the wires and then this is the other connection that we're talking about where they, they're shrink wrapped, soldered and uh, on the inside they are varnished. Uh, with an insulating varnish. So we have two 100 watt panels on top, um, the auxiliary battery, the solenoid, all the wiring, the charge controller, and the fuse. That the and the solenoid. That's like the basics, right? Yeah, that would be, I would say an auxiliary battery, the charge controller, the solenoid are gonna be the very very basics mm -hmm. because you can you can run a backup battery system and your house system off of just those things because mm -hmm. her charge controller has the USB to come off of it um, it doesn't matter the battery capacity you could always upgrade and then run everything off of the front of the car because I mean you just have you have a V8 generator mm -hmm. okay so um, we were just talking about like a diagram like a linear diagram that would be helpful so you know exactly what is connected to what so can you just explain what you just said again this, is, this visual actually is most of the uh, of what the diagram would be uh, if you follow the wires but it's kind of a mess so I'll just point out where each wire goes and what each wire does from the battery and through the battery it connects to the rest of the truck uh, is this this high this uh, large gauge wire that comes to this this fuse this 200 amp fuse in its own fuse block to the solenoid and to the positive terminal of this battery positive. and then this negative terminal goes to ground uh, which you can ground anywhere on the system in this case we actually had access to the frame because we had pulled the carpet out and uh, we also have a grounded uh, at the front but with a smaller gauge wire uh, from the solar panel you saw the wires go all the way down goes into the charge controller and these terminals uh, uh, down here at the bottom. So two of the, the two, one of the pair, the red and black, right, uh, goes from the solar panels to the charge controller and the other pair, red and black, go to this fuse block and then from the fuse blocks it goes down to uh, the terminals for this battery. And it's only the positive uh, that we've had fused to be ground everywhere else. Uh, either to the body or to this uh, negative terminal, which again is then to the body. <laughs>